things going on with our Rockets. Um, yesterday's game, um, you know, we've lost three winnable games, three games where we had four quarter leads. Um, last half full, uh, that's saying that we're close. Uh, reality is, uh, I could still be, you know, we could still be far away because uh, these things have happened uh, three weeks in a row. Positives from the game. I thought our special teams were outstanding yesterday. Of course, the fake punt, but so much more. Punting game, uh, coverage, you know, coverage, kickoff, and punts. I thought we did some good things that gave us an opportunity, uh, you know, to win the football game. Uh, offensively, um, we, we need more, you know. Um, of course, we put more points up on the board yesterday, but. Um, there were opportunities for, for other plays. Um, favorable third downs are, would be a third and one, and we had four of those that we didn't convert. So not converting on uh, four third and ones, um, two critical interceptions. Both were tip balls, but two critical interceptions really hurt us a lot. And if you can't uh, stop the run, it's going to be tough duty. And uh, defensively, uh, we weren't good on third downs, and um, but the runs. Uh, I think they got about 130 of the yards, and uh, with three with three runs. And uh, in order for that to happen, you know, missed tackles, but uh, we had uh, two of them. We you know, one was a definite bust. So those you know those kind of things really kind of lead to um, you you losing games at the end of the game. But uh, these are things when you watch the video, you see it's, it's obvious where we can clean, you know, where we, we can clean some things up, and that's what we'll do. Andrew Wise, I um, thought we ended up in uh, pretty good shape uh, going in, so that shouldn't be a factor. Take your question. You mentioned the third and one, and so three others in the past two games. What's the consistent problem there? Uh, I think you can't go, I won't go back all the way to those. Um, you know, one was late, third and one. We were trying to, you know, two-minute situation. We were trying to complete a pass there. On the goal line, that was the third one. That was a big one on the goal line. We let a, one of our linebackers run through an A-gap. That shouldn't happen. And the other two, we, you know, were run pass options on it, and uh, we should have just taken the run. Those are some things that can be cleaned up, though, and my point a little bit on it. But you want to get in those situations. If you have to get to third down, you want it to be a third and one. All the downs, is it two of those were run RPOs? How are you seeing Davis handle those decisions and how you worked with We them? didn't handle those decisions the right way. You know, I'll say that. Okay. On the tackling part, you talked about yesterday and today. Is there a way to improve tackling? Because obviously you don't want to do a lot of live hitting in practice in terms of giving guys just to prove um, how they're doing their fits, how they're that wasn't about fits or any of that. You know, you're going to get in position. Eventually, you're going to get in position where you got to make a tackle. Simple as that. you got to wrap up, and that's what we didn't do. Are there ways to improve it? Yeah, get in a little bit better position and wrap up once you get to the point of attack. I mean, that's what it was. It's one thing to miss one tackle, but we should be set up where we should be talking about missed tackles with a 10-yard gain or something like that, but not those explosive plays like we've been getting up. We've been giving up. Now, talking about all the negative that happened, first off, defensively, I'm going to talk about the positive. Uh, Jalen Petrie's game. Uh, rookie, outstanding job. Two interceptions, uh, big sack, tackle for a loss. Just overall good play uh, throughout. I mean, that's encouraging when you see a player like that. Uh, Jerry Hughes. Uh, Jerry has, um, so you have our, one of our youngest players, really playing good ball, and you have our oldest defensive player that's uh, playing good ball also. Jerry did a good job rushing the pass and things like that. There's a lot of in-between, though, that we got to take care of. And back to the offensive side of the football. Um, you know, when, you, when I talk about those plays we didn't make, it can make the outcome look a lot worse. But there were so many guys that improved from week two. And if we can continue the path, I mean, we'll eventually get this figured out. Coach, in the time when yesterday, when it looked like when Chicago was 
really starting to gas y'all in, in between the three and the threes. Was, were you trying to do something different? Maybe bring some additional line back to try to plug some holes? Or no, just... I think I think we did that a little bit. I mean, Petrie got a his last sack was on a blitz, so we were blitzing throughout. I mean, that's just I wish it was as simple as just blitz. And uh, um, to me, as I look at it, did we have somebody in position to make a tackle? If, it's a, if the answer is yes, it's a good defense, and we got to be able to, to execute that way. What was your, from your second takeaway after, um, or the second look at the film after after yesterday, the last play, the pass, it seemed Brandon Cooks might have been open. What were your thoughts on Davis Mills' decision there? Well, I mean, you, you know the outcome on the decision. Uh, first off, the ball was tipped. So any quarterback that's throwing a ball and the ball gets tipped, I mean, Whose fault really is it? Um, but we didn't execute the way we need to. You know, in that last play, whenever you get a chance to analyze it, there's normally a few guys that's open on most plays. But um, it, it shouldn't come down to that. I mean, you, we can say that one play, and you cannot have a takeaway in that situation. I'm not saying that. But look at all the other opportunities we had uh, before that. I'm going to go back to the third and one on the goal line, what, on the two-yard line or whatever. And taking a sack, that play was just as important there, too. we got to be able to clean these ones up. The last couple of weeks, y'all been really hurt by the, the backup running back for both teams. Um, and, and, of course, yesterday with the starting back going out early in the game. Um, and then you guys have only really gotten production from the running back position from Damian Pierce. How important is it for a team to have production from a second guy, especially when your top guys are really like this? Well, I think it's very important. I think most most teams, though, play two guys. They feel pretty good about two guys. And um, so, yeah, he was listed as a second team running back, but he has played. He's a good football player. I think most uh, in the NFL, there's a lot of backups like that just waiting for the opportunity they hadn't gotten it. But those plays yesterday, that had a lot. That I'm going to that one big run that he had. It had a lot to do with us. It was we we had someone out of a gap. And we miss a big tackle. That leads to maybe guys, you know, backup running backs coming in and really having big games based on what, you know, the other side did. And that was definitely the case on that play. When, got, when, you, when you talk about needing more from the offense, like you mentioned earlier, I mean, need, need more from offense, defense, and all, yes, but keep going. Well, I just be in terms yeah. of a, a, a second back, are y'all thinking of maybe different rotations, you know, bringing in somebody different? Uh, no, or no. Something, something no, we, 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 well, no, we, you're talking running back. Running yeah, we like our running backs that we have. Um, I, Damon has got to protect the football better. But, um, no, I, the, the times that he's played all three games, I mean, we like what our one running back has done. And, um, you know, we haven't, it's pretty hard to get three running backs involved. And, and Rex in his role will continue. I mean, I, I've seen signs of improvement each week. It's not where it needs to be. A lot of time with the running game, too, you got to have some explosive in there, some explosive runs, and then it looks a whole lot better. That's what they were able to do yesterday. Eventually, we'll get that. Where have you seen progress from Davis Mills over the first three weeks of the season? Where have, we, have I seen progress? Like, it would be like me, uh, you know, you guys, Davis, and the rest of our team. I mean, we haven't made enough progress to win football games right now. But I thought Davis was, you take away the interceptions. I know we can't do that, but I thought his pocket presence was a lot better yesterday. He threw some good passes, a couple to Nico throughout. I thought he threw, you know, better passes yesterday than he, than he did the previous, uh, the previous week. So there, there, is, there is small progress being made uh, throughout with all of the players. And, of course, he's a base part of that. It's hard to talk about progress when you finish the way we did, though. Coach, uh, last week, Pat Hamilton talked about one of the key points of emphasis that he has staying out, out of obvious passing situations. I think you guys had 13 of those uh, yesterday. When you go back and look at the film, how did you assess how your offense? You, know, you say staying out of obvious passing situations? Well, it's pretty easy to, to uh, look at that. We had, we had four third and ones. I'm going to look more to that than the obvious passing situation. As long as you take care of the third and ones and you convert on those, everything else will work itself out. You live for the day when you have when you get to third down and it's a third and one situation. We need to be do a better job. 
my biggest complaint, yeah, first, the, te- the turnovers. And there it's just us con- it's converting third and ones. And a lot of things we're talking about right now wouldn't be here. Is there a balance to your defense has historically have been very good at forcing fumbles. Is there a balance to trying to go for a tackle but also trying to separate the ball? Us missing ball? tackles has nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. When you go watch the video and see how many times yesterday we missed a tackle where you saw somebody trying to go for the ball. So don't use that. We won't use that. We've got to get in posi- better position with angles and being in the right spot. And we get there, we need to be able to wrap up. It has nothing to do with that. And as far as our form of defense, we would never stop trying to take the ball away to win football games. Just like we'll never stop trying to uh, intercept balls instead of knock them down. You want me to keep going? Of course, the answer is, is yes. That's what everybody's doing every play. They're trying to do that, but uh, we got to find the ways to, uh, I mean, you know, every pass coverage that you have, I mean, that's the goal to do that. But I can't say that you can do that in a tar game. We've got to find ways to, uh, Brandon has to find ways to get open a little bit more. We've got to find better ways to get him to ball. That's kind of the simple answer uh, for a lot of what we did. But, but I'm going to go back to yesterday. I don't think it was about that. It was just you look at some of the critical moments that we weren't able to get that done. We talked a lot about the missed tackling already, but the linebacker's position specifically, I know that's a, a hallmark of your, of your defense. What are you seeing? What's your assessment of the linebacker play? Uh, oh, I don't think our play has been good. Uh, the linebackers, just as a whole, it hadn't been good enough. But I'm going to start up front first. Going into this game yesterday, it was about our offensive line blocking them. It was about our defensive line controlling theirs. We didn't do a good job of that. Whenever you get a running back to the second wave, it's going to start with the D-line. And then from there, linebackers are going to be a big part of um, any plays that, that are able to break. Run and pass. Linebackers are always involved. So when we talk about not playing our best defense right now, of course the linebackers have a big say in that. In your experience, how do you describe working with a team that has you know, a 52-man roster in terms of just working with space and how to organize that? I don't know uh-huh. if it's unusual or not. No, it's really not because how many dress on game day? 48. That's what it's about is that. We have a lot of other players, of course, as we talk about that, you know, practice squad guys can move up. It doesn't affect it at all. And in our in the case yesterday, what I look at each week is that how many guys do you really need to win football games? You know, I've asking, been asking an awful lot about uh, how many receivers we dress, how many played yesterday. Really, we dress four, three really play. We dressed an extra defensive lineman. We went nine yesterday. Our ninth one played how many snaps yesterday? One snap. So you have more than enough. As a general rule, as you look at it, you need a starting group and you need one backup at every position. And then the rest of the guys that dress are guys that have a big special teams role. So I think we have the numbers about what they need to be, whether it's 52 on the roster or what. It's more than enough. And to follow on, I mean, last year um, you know, with an extra inactive player, a quarterback to this year too, I mean, it's one player that hasn't been part of the active roster. I mean, is one player, it would give you one more person to look at the field on game day. Is that, is that something? I don't think missed? you need to look at anybody on game day. I, I, the, the guys that we have, that's what I think we need for it. Right. And again, we need a starting group that we're going to play and who needs some backup, a backup at every position. I think we have that. Now, will we, uh, if we had, if we could dress 60 guys, would I like to do that? Yeah. 80 would be, we, everyone on our roster would help a little bit too. But you, you really don't need uh, that many. We have more than enough to get what we need to get accomplished. Coach, would you change? Coach, Coach, would you change? I know you've been talking about the emphasis on finishing and finishing. Will, will, your, will your speech to him, will you be coming up with something different or will we just nah, keep, keep nah, hammering it, hammering nah, the same point? No, nah, no. Nah. Guys, I mean, when the first time something doesn't go right, you change everything you believe that quick. Well, there's no belief in anything if you do that. 
So now it says no, 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 and no. We're going to keep doing the things that we believe in. We're going to do those better. It's where we are three games into this 17-game regular season. Well, uh, I just say we have an outstanding uh, advanced scouting uh, department, personnel department, so there won't be any surprises like that. I mean, we're aware of the guys that are out right now. We've already gotten a scouting report on the Chargers. We played them last year. All the things you kind of know about them, we'll know too. And uh, that won't be a reason for us not to have success against them based on not knowing their personnel. Uh, you know, yesterday was one of those days where and it wasn't gonna, it wasn't a passing day. Starting with that, I mean, it was a show pass and take off running that kind of led to a little of the the rushing yardage too. But he um, wasn't to answer your question. He wasn't he wasn't attacked as much. Uh, neither one of our corners. It was more about them supporting the run yesterday, and we can do a better job of that. But Stingley will get better each game he plays. Thank you.